Hey everybody, uh, I'm John Gallo, the Sports Information Director at the University of Scranton from my home in Dunmore, Pennsylvania. And today we're going to talk with Keegan Connolly of the University of Scranton wrestling team. Uh, he is a senior. Um, this is his last semester and we'll talk a little bit about some of what has happened with Keegan over the last couple of weeks thanks to the COVID-19 outbreak. As everybody knows, all NCAA championships were canceled uh, a few weeks ago and Keegan was in the, in the middle of it at the NCAA championships. Uh, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So uh, Keegan, you're in your home right now in Smacksville, Pennsylvania, which is not very far from Scranton. So I just, just how are you doing right now? Doing all right. Just kind of, you know, trying to make myself busy with all the stuff going on. So, I mean, it, my parents are doctors and they're, they've been going to the office and they said that, you know, the best way to just deal with it is staying at home and, you know, doing what you can to stay busy. So. Okay. That's, that's good. <laughs> that's yeah. good. So we'll go back to a few weeks ago. So it seems like now every, the weeks are just kind of all combined, but um, back on uh, March 11th, you left here, you left Scranton for Cedar Rapids, Iowa for the NCAA Division Three Wrestling Championship. You qualified at the regionals a few weeks before that. So, you know, you're on the plane with Coach Al uh, and Coach Burnett. You're going out to Iowa at that point. We, it was known that this COVID-19, you know, disease was starting to spread across the country at that point, but we didn't really know the extent of it at that point. So when you got on that plane and went out there, what was going through your mind at that point? Did at any point during the trip out to Iowa, did you think that this would get canceled and you'd be coming home a couple of days later? Not necessarily. Um, I mean, so when we just got to the airport, I actually got the email from, um, I think it was Father Pilar's saying that uh, the rest – the spring sports season was canceled, but we got that, I got that email and we were like, Oh crap. You know, like that's, that's the real deal. But, um, and, or no, I think it was an email that he canceled, uh, any remaining, uh, sport activities for like the week or something like that. So we were like, Oh, like we're here, like we're getting on the plane we're flying out, you know, cause it, it was the tomorrow or two days later was the championship. So, um, that was pretty much it. Like, I didn't really think much of it at that point. Um, but that, then again, that was like two days before the, the tournament. So, so you know, you guys get out there, and it actually the news broke uh, that we were not going to have championships the day before. So the championship was going to start on the 13th, which was a Friday. So Thursday, uh, the 12th, it, you know, the NCAA later in the afternoon basically came out and said, we're canceling all championships. We're canceling across divisions, not only the winter championships, but the spring championships as well. And so at that point in Cedar Rapids, when the news breaks and your mind, but people that you had maybe, you know, had met at that point from being there for a day, what was going on? What was the scene like? Um, it was actually, it was kind of like, it didn't, it didn't feel real at one point. I was, um, I have some friends from Muhlenberg who I drill with and they were there and we were, I was, in the competing room there were like six mats it was this big arena and i was literally like putting on my shoes getting ready to go out there and warm up just practice you know the day before um, the match and the announcer got on the mic and i could almost see it coming when he was like when he was announcing it like i, I pretty much knew what he was gonna say but I, it's like a train wreck like you can't look away you know and um he laid out the announcement that, you know, everything's the division three national uh, championships are canceled. And you could just see, like I was sitting there like looking around and there were kids crying. There were kids hoods on their face, just screaming. Like I was just kind of sitting there taking it all in. Um, but the one thing that really stuck with me is that I've never been in a room where there have been more people on their cell phones, just like calling their parents, calling family members, friends, telling them that, you know, it's over. And, you know, my, the thing that uh, sucks the most is that my parents had just gotten there and they drove there. So literally they get there and it's like, Hey, ma, dad, uh, it's, it's canceled. Time, time to drive back, you know? So Boy, geez. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the, wow. the main thing that stuck. Um, and then I just kind of like, went up to my room, like just kind of sat there. We went out to go eat. And that, and then the next morning, uh, my coach, uh, my assistant coach, uh, uh, what's his name? Forget, coach forget. He, uh, 
he um he luck we're lucky we had him because he drove out took a shuttle to the airport and got us a flight home the next day at 10 wow. at 10 30 which was mm-hmm. amazing i mean like i we were in iowa we were only there to wrestle we didn't want to stay there any longer than we had to especially after hearing that news so if it weren't for him we might have been stuck there for another day or two so mm-hmm. but yeah yeah. And, yeah i mean and i you know again i'm I think what a lot of people maybe, you know, you, how hard really everybody works and, you know, and for you, obviously, you know, the last couple of years, last year, you, you barely miss out on it. And you, you know, you finally have the opportunity to go and, you know, just this unthinkable thing kind of happens. So I can understand kind of the emotion, you know, from everybody and, and you know, there that, you know, it's, it's getting taken away. I think division three athletes, you know, you guys, you're, you know, students first and athletes second. That's what I always say. So, you know, like, that was it. And at that point, the finality when you were, you know, making that trip back to Pennsylvania on that plane, did it finally kind of sink in that, wow, like, I'm not going to compete ever again? Yeah, that was was probably the the toughest part of of dealing with it. I mean, me and my dad, like, we talked about it a little bit. And it's it's nothing you really can can fight. I mean, I've been telling people – I've, I've had people been reaching out to me even to today saying like, Hey man, I heard about what happened. Like, I'm really sorry, but it, it's, it's funny. I tell people like when I qualified, everybody was coming up to me, Hey, like I heard congratulations, congratulations. And then a few after, you know, this happened, it's just everybody coming up to me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, it, it's kind of like, Oh yeah. Like you, you can't take these things for granted. You know, it's, it's, um, I don't know. I mean, it's, the the main thing that people were asking me was um you know is it going to be postponed um Mm -hmm. or is it going to be you know scheduled for a later time and i couldn't tell them you know i I didn't know if there was a possibility of that happening if you know maybe they'd schedule another date but the the national champion it's not like a normal meet it's it's going to take a lot of work and time to schedule it for all these teams to come together again and you know have the event i mean it, it literally takes almost the, the entire season to plan it but um yeah i uh i i pretty much told everyone you know i i don't know and it seems like at this point it's obviously not going to happen if this is you know the end of your career which it sounds like it's going to be you're going to end up having a pretty pretty unbelievable career train you're gonna end up being you know the third winning wrestler in the history of the program so let's I just want to talk about to kind of twist it from all of that kind of not so much negativity but just so, so much adversity that everybody went through at the at the NCAA championships to a positive so talk about your your favorite memories at Scranton not only um competing as a student athlete but also you know off of the mat off of the the out of the long center uh practice you know well, you know, both avenues. What were your favorite memories of the university? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot to pick from. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'd say, like, my favorite ones, um, I'll, I'll start with off the mat because, I mean, there is, I mean, the whole team. As, as much as people say, you know, wrestling, is it, it is an individual sport. You do still have your teammates. It is still very much a team uh, sport, I think, in my opinion. But um, probably – some of my favorite memories were um, definitely like pre-match and post-match kind of um, activities. Like what we would do before a match, we'd all be hanging out in the locker room, just talking, doing whatever. Um, and the bus rides, the bus rides are always the best part for me. Uh, we would be blasting music and just, you know, talking and just hanging out, having lots some laughs. And it obviously, I mean, for any team, I mean, bus rides back home after you win, it's so much, you know, all the stress is off your shoulders. You did what you had to do. You know, it's time to relax, you know, have some fun. Um, and we would, my, uh, our, our one captain, uh, Kyle Schaefer, he always brought a speaker on the bus and he'd be blasting music. You couldn't even hear people speaking half the time, but it was, it was fun. Um, and we always like stop at like McDonald's or Chipotle or something. And, you know, some of the guys would be getting two things, three things. Sometimes it was <laughs> competition. And um, the one time we went to uh, this one wing place, it's called Quaker Steak and Lube. And our one backup heavyweight, this is, this is two years ago. So these kids aren't here anymore, but um, our backup heavyweight, uh, 
Cotter and our 165 pounder. I think he was 165 pounder. Yeah, Kevin Merle. They had a wing eating contest. Like the um, they had this like super spicy wing, and if you eat it, you get a T-shirt. And both of them got the T-shirt, so <laughs> it was pretty funny. And then like also in terms of you know off the mat before practice, we'd always, especially this year, we would be playing games before practice. Like we'd be playing handball, frisbee, um, basketball. I joke with people all the time. I said, I, I honestly think I got better at frisbee in those sports than I did at wrestling this year because we played them so often. Um, but yeah, that, I'd, I'd say that in, in terms of off the mat, those are the most fun activities. Um, on the mat, my most, my, you know, biggest memories, um, definitely probably Electric City Duels this year. Um, Electric City Duels is definitely a tournament. It, it's, it's Scranton's own tournament. And we have it every year. It's like our first or second event for the most part. And it's, it kind of, you know, we don't, we have like probably three or four home events throughout the year, but we never really have our own tournament. And this is our thing. Like, this is where we run the show. This is where, you know, we, we can really, uh, I don't know, like reach out to, we can tell all our friends, our family members to come and watch. And there's always a big crowd. And, we my what's interesting is that my freshman year we won it and then my senior year we won it so it was kind of nice to you know win it right when I got there and then win it again as I as I left um but like I said you know it's it's all depends on the team with with matches like that I mean I I think this year it was um it was my first event because I tore my meniscus earlier in the year and I didn't even know if I was going to wrestle but um we, it was my first event. I had like a match against some kid from Lackawanna and it was, you know, it was a nice like tune up match, you know, get back into the season. But then after that, it was, it was put on the gas pedal because I had to, um, I had to beat my kid for our team to win against Oneana. The score was matched 15 to 15, I think. And then my, uh, I took him down in overtime and that's what, uh, you know, got us the team win against them. And then we were wrestling Rowan. And uh, once again, it came down to me to win for our team. And I uh, tech followed the kid for our team to win. But it, as much as like, it kind of sucks coming down to me to win it for the team. If it wasn't for the team, I wouldn't have that opportunity for us to win. You know, because it, it's what they do sets it up for me to, you know, oh, like, they, they can, my team can be confident. It's like, Oh, like he's the anchor, you know, he'll win for us. He's got, it. so, you know, that's, it's, it's, those were, that was definitely my, my favorite memory of this year. You know, it was, um, and then at the end, you know, everyone's, Oh, they're all freaking out. Mm -hmm. And it, may, it makes you feel, you know, it makes you feel valued and it makes everybody else on the teams, the team's effort is valued as a whole, you know, cause like, it's like I said, if it wasn't for them, I can, you know, clinch it for us at the end. So. All right. Awesome. So we'll uh, end it on this. So uh, also you're a pretty good student as well. You're a scholar all American from the national wrestling coaches association this past year and the last few years. So uh, what are your plans going to be after, you know, you do receive your degree um, after graduation? Uh, what are your professional plans? Uh, in, uh, so in terms of like working, I definitely want to um, do some sort of law enforcement. Um, I, I've had that in my mind ever since high school. Um, I'm not really that big into like the crime shows and all that, even though they are sometimes interesting, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I just, I think some people don't understand that like law, law enforcement, a police officer's job is to protect and serve the public. And I, that's, that's what I want to do. You know, I, I, I just want to help people out. Um, I'm not looking to like give people tickets all the time. You know? like, <laughs> it's just, it's just a job that I think I'd be, I'd be good at. Cause I, I do like helping people out. Um, even though, you know, I, I don't always have the best advice or, you know, I don't always, you know, I can't give everybody solutions to problems. I, you know, try my best to do what I can. And then right. I also, I think I'm hoping down the line, um, maybe, maybe if I, you know, get established, get a, get a house, you know, get the job, get all that stuff figured out. I might, 
I might even look into some coaching or something, you know, with wrestling or, or some sort of, I need to do something, you know, a hobby to stay busy. Um, but I think maybe coaching wrestling, whether it be high school, college, you know, even like middle school or something like that, or like even going to like a jujitsu club or something like that, just something to keep in the loop, you know? Yeah, that's wonderful. So uh, Keegan, obviously from all of us at, Scranton in the athletic department. It's obviously been a thrill and an honor to watch you over the last few years. So, uh, you know, we thank you for giving us so many memories uh, athletically and academically over the last few years. And obviously best of luck with everything and stay safe, man. It's, uh, it's obviously a very uh, interesting time for all of us. And, you know, at, at this point, I think we just have to wish, you know, wish each other safety and, and go from there. So good luck and, and stay safe. Okay. Thank you.